Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Legend of Dragoon right here on Missledyne Online. What's up? That's me. That's my channel. Thank you guys so much for clicking on yet another video of Legend of Dragoon. I believe this is episode like 31 or something. I, I listen, I don't know. We're pumping these things out like crazy now. Huge shout out to those of you watching in the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern. Sincerely appreciate you guys and I've been having a lot of fun talking to you. So thank you. In the last episode of The Legend of Dragoon, we arrived here in the Forest of Wingleys, but that wasn't until after Shauna lost control of the White Silver Dragon and uh, is no longer in our party and instead was replaced with the one and only, the first sacred sister of Milisezu, that, my friends, is Miranda, who got pretty much everything that Shauna had, uh, except, you know, Dart's love. But other than that, and in this episode, we are heading to the land of Kadesa, the forbidden land of the Winglies, the place that we've actually seen in the cinematic that showed the end of the dragon campaign that Rose showed Dart when they were locked in a cave long, long ago. But first, before we head to Kadesa, we need to head all the way to Neats. This is actually a wonderful time to backtrack and go there. There's actually no story reason whatsoever uh, to go to Neat. The game will not make you go there. It is just an extra area that you can go and check out for your own eyes. The best way to do that is to leave the Forest of Wingleys, go into the Evergreen Forest, and literally just south from the Evergreen Forest, or from the entrance to the Forest of Wingleys, is the quickest way to get to Neat. This is probably the last time in the game that we'll actually be this close to just going there so i figure we might as well just go and i was so close to getting through this area without a random encounter anyways this is the path we need to go which will lead us to a new map of the evergreen forest which we haven't seen before because there's no reason to show it it's just this little path here that leads right back to the world map and allows us to head to the tragic village of Neat, the place where Dart was born, the place where the black monster attacked and set him on his quest. This, my friends, is the tragic village of Neat. One of the smallest places we can actually go to, the smallest towns. There are no NPCs here. Uh, in fact, it is just, it is just destroyed. No one tried to fix it after nothing. However, right here in the lamp, we can find another Stardust. The only thing that we can find here in Neat and then, of course, we can come over here. This is only a two-map village. This is actually even smaller than Salis. And we can look at this. I see the name of my mom and dad. Hmm. What are their names, Dart? What are their names? Tell us their names. That's it, though. That's literally all you can do in Neat. Uh, so I just, I just really wanted to point that out. And obviously, it's important to get the Stardust because we're getting every single one. And this is the quickest time or the the shortest the the closest <laughs> the closest will ever be to neat i figured out what i was trying to say anyways now that we're done we'll head all the way back to the forest of wingleys and we just want to head all the way back to ancestor blano in the very very back like we did in the previous episode hopefully you remember the way real quick where we found elder uh, elder bardell uh, I also wanted to just show that if we come here, we can click on this, and this will actually fully restore us, remove status afflictions, anything else that you might have gotten on the way to knee. Anyways, we are super, super close to Ancestor Blano. So let's just uh, continue on the way, because of course we need him to send us to Kadesa. We can't just walk there. No, 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 no. Instead, we need the magic power of the Winglies to see if we can actually arrive at our destination. Easy peasy, we're already here. So let's go ahead and use this door on the left. Back to Ancestor Blano. Man, I can't get over how beautiful this map looks. Absolutely stunning. You have the moon that never sets in the background. Ah, look at it. It's beautiful. Anyways, let's talk to Ancestor Blano. And let's get ready, my friends, to head all the way to Cadessa. The Dragon Block Staff is sealed in the Forbidden Land over there. Forbidden Land? It is the place where our hideous memory sleeps. It used to be, until 11,000 years ago, a palace for us Winglies, and it was the place where eternal prosperity was promised. It was called the Royal Capital Cadessa. Now it is a mere ruin without a name. Are you sure? It's okay for us to go in. It is fine. Everything is in the past. 
I see. We have to do what we can do now. Are you ready? Hmm. Yes, we are. So make sure you are fully stocked up on items. Anything else that you think you're going to need going in here. Uh, I'm not too worried just because we have somebody like Miranda that can just heal us entirely. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not super, super worried about this. This is not that hard of an area, to be totally honest with you. There's a hard boss fight that we'll do, but that's about it. Yes, we are. This is, of course, a good time to make sure you got the Stardust out of Wing Force of Wingly. Don't worry, you can come back here. It's not like it disappears. But once you go to Kadesa, you are in Kadesa until you finish it off. And I absolutely love this. This is the wisdom of the Winglies. Mm, it's a ruin of their wisdom. Let's go. I love the use of magic and technology uh, entwined here to bring us all the way. To the forbidden land of Kadesa. The place, like I said. Where the final battle of the dragon campaign took place. The place where all the dragoons fell and Melbu Frama himself was defeated. This is the forbidden land. The ruins of past glory. Look at it. To me, that rot, the, the... No remnant of the royal capital remains. Uh, what's wrong, Miru? You're shaking. Uh, cause I... I hear the outcries of the people who died here. Are you going to wait in the forest, Miru? Mm -mm. No, I'm okay. If I can, can't get past such a small thing, how will I be able to fight against the divine dragon? I just love, like, that over there, if you kind of look to the left, to me, that looks like a piece of a virage. It might just be part of the landscape, but I think, I don't know, I I love it. The landscape is very, very particular here, and it's, it's interesting. Where are we? Isn't it cool? There's, like, steam coming up. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but it all looks like a virage type thing. Right here, we can pick up a mind purifier. Uh, obviously not something like you can just get rid of it if you want. It might be helpful for some enemies that we'll find a little bit later in this area. But not yet. It's also a very, very straightforward map at first. And then it becomes confusing later on. But as you can see, there's really only one way to go, which is to these teleporters over here. All right. Our first encounter in here, which means that I get to talk about a little of some of the enemies that we'll find here, uh, including one of the really cool ones. Uh, which, oh, I got so lucky. All right, so this is actually one of the enemies I was talking about that we need a mind purifier for. These are spinning heads. They do not have an element of any kind. They have 400 health. You want to take these out right away uh, because they have, uh, they can do a bunch of different status effects on you. And we don't want that. Now, you'll notice that I'm using Miru and Kongo in my party right now. And the reason for that is because I want them to build their additions and their SP and everything else. Uh, and they are the furthest ones that they, they need the most experience in SP. So, they are the ones we're going to be using. Also, I want to point out the new battle theme here in this area. Isn't it dope? All right. These, though. These are the important guys. Get used to fighting these, because if you want to get everything in the game like I do, you're going to be spending some time killing these. These are pups. They are Earth Elementals, 300 health, which means they're actually not that bad at all. Very easy to defeat. But they have a 2% chance of dropping the Dancer's Ring, which is essentially the same effect as the Bandit's Ring, except they are available for the female characters in our party. Which is, which is great. That will increase the speed of Miranda and Miru even further than it already is. Very, very useful for certain, uh, certain unique monsters later on. Nice job, Miru. Of course, we didn't get one in that fight, but I thought I would just point it out. 2% drop. Pretty, pretty fantastic, to be honest with you. Uh, we can buy those later on. Uh, but it will be quite some time until we'll be able to actually buy our first one. This is the earliest point in the game that you could get Dancer's Ring for our already fastest characters. And there is a pretty tricky boss fight coming up, and I would recommend getting trying to get one before that boss fight to equip onto Miru or Miranda. Now, we can actually use this teleporter here. 
this is it looks confusing but it's actually not you literally just run from one teleporter to another and this will lead us to this chest right here which is the dancer shoes which have the same effect as the bandit shoes but again are for the women in our party so we're actually going to go ahead and we can equip that on miru right away uh which is going to make a already fast character even faster which is pretty crazy to us and yes uh the the game uh relied on uh gender for equipment uh you know it was different times back then folks and then we can go ahead and jump into these and just follow the path back pretty easy and straightforward as of right now but trust this place gets a little confusing a little later on but as of right now it's simply just run and run all right let's see if we'll encounter any new enemies here we're actually only missing uh three that we haven't seen that was a mirror match but let's hope hey dancer's ring no okay whatever it's fine and we can just continue on to the this other teleporter here which will allow us to run into this room i actually really like this area but definitely get used to the wingly cities are all about using teleporters all about traversing them in a uh, a very non-human way if you will but so far, so good. Very straightforward. You won't get lost. Also, you guys ready for this? It's such a large space. Hmm. Indeed. I wonder what it was for. Hmm. Congo feels mm, smells like blood. Blood and a large space. It sounds like a coliseum. Yes, it really was. I heard it from the ancestor. <laughs> Once upon a time, it was a coliseum. But it wasn't for regular fights that you won or lost. It was for matches to the death. Wingleys would just enjoy the view from above. Of fighters picked from among the dominated humans, dragons, and some gigantos. <laughs> I am the offspring of that kind of wingly. The ancestor told us that this is a mere ruin, didn't he? What happened here happened in the past. No matter what sorrow there was, it's no longer our sorrow. Isn't that right? There is nothing to worry about, Miru. The sins of the past are there just to tell us not to repeat them anymore. Cheer up. Let's focus on moving on. Hmm. Love that moment. Love this place. You can see the destruction that has been wrought here. Yes, this, my friends, was a Coliseum over 10,000 years ago used to watch. I mean, the same way, you know, we, we have Coliseums in real life, right? But imagine being a human against a Giganto. No, thank you. No, thank you. Congo squish. Very easy map on that part. We literally just run. It just brings you to one side. You just run across over and over and over. Now, here's the big thing that I want to point out here is we have right here a restore point the big thing here is it will restore your hp your mp all that but it does not cleanse any of your status effects so if you don't have any mind purifiers bottom purifiers anything like that potentially you could run into an issue but because of course we are dragoons uh we can just transform into dragoons and lose that status affliction there's also a save point here because right here we actually have the choice of two paths we can either go this way for a much shorter path, or we can go to this teleporter for a much longer path. We're actually gonna go this way first, uh, which will lead us to a boss fight, a uh, an extra boss fight, a, an optional boss, if you will, that you just, you can choose to fight or not fight. And we also got a new enemy that we haven't seen before. This is a toadstool, earth elemental, 150 health. Uh, this thing could get, be, be, just get defeated very quickly. Uh, but also a, a thing that I wanna point out with this guy, is that it came with a buck? And also, of course, everybody's missing.
My sources say that thing had 150 health, but we just did 134 and it killed it. So my source is wrong. And Puck. Look at that. A Puck in a Toadstool defeated in one fight. Let's, or in one move. Let's see if we will get a Dancer's Ring. No? Okay, it's fine. Whatever. I didn't care. I didn't want it. And one of the last enemies we can find in this area. This is a Gnome Earth Elemental. We'll just go ahead and defeat him real quick. 250 health. Has an 8% chance of dropping a healing potion. Not a big deal, but we'll just go ahead and finish this off. But before we continue on to this optional secret boss, I want to go ahead and uh, I just went and did some very, very basic grinding. Uh, very small. I just got uh, Miru to Dragoon level 2 where she learned a new magic spell. I got her addition up just past 40. And Kongo, I got his Inferno up past 22. Not that it really matters because I'm actually switching Kongo out for Miss Miranda here. And this is also a really good time uh, to equip Miranda and Miru with things that instead of avoiding uh, damage, uh, actually, or avoiding magical damage, uh, for this boss in particular, avoid uh, physical damage is actually going to be a little bit more important. Currently, Miru has the War God Sash equipped, but I'm not going to use that for this particular fight. You could go ahead and use the Silver Stone for this optional uh, boss. It will, it will avoid, it will help for some of the things, but instead I'm actually just going to put the Therapy Ring on Miru. And then uh, for Miranda, who we just put into the fight, I'm actually going to give her uh, the... Instead of the War God's Amulet that she currently has, I'm going to give her the Magical Hat, which is going to give her uh, uh, 150 MP. And then I'm also going to give her the Amulet. Perfect. So now she has the Amulet and the Magical Hat equipped. Now that means that Miranda's not going to be attacking as often, but she's going to be using her most powerful magics more frequently. So it balances it out really well. And don't worry, this isn't the last time I'm going to be using this strategy. Now, again, this is an optional way. You do not need to go this way. It is the fastest way to get to the final boss of this area. Uh, but this is not the way you have to go. In front of us, we now have a puzzle. And what's interesting about this puzzle is you have to do it in a very specific order. And you'll notice that above each of these rooms is a symbol of something. Right here, we have the 97th fruit, the Giganto. Right here, we have the 107th fruit, the Winglies. Right here, the 99th fruit, the Manitos. The 105th fruit, the Dragon. The 106th fruit, the Human. And right here is the 96th fruit. Very interesting. So if you don't do it in order, Dart will look around and be like, whoa, what do I do? Huh, what do, what do I do? And then they'll come out and they'll actually talk to us about the what they're looking at. We're not going forward. Hmm. But I don't think this is a mere blind alley. Then I'll take care of it with my Rouge School technique. Duh! It doesn't work. Wherever it leads to, I don't think Wingleys would use a fist as a key to open it. Hmm, I guess you're right. Maybe... The drawings on the entrances might have something to do with it. Let's try a bunch of things. Hmm, yeah, why don't we try that? So if we were to use this one... You actually need to, so the solution of the puzzle is that you actually need to do these in order of fruits. So this is the 96, so we would go to that one. Then we'd go to the Gigantos, then we do Menentos, then we do Dragons, Humans, Winglies. But I want to see them have another interaction here. What on earth are those drawings indicating? Congo thinks this is Gigantos, no? Oh, that must be it. Then these must be the Winglies. Hmm. These are dragons. Ah, huh. these are Menentos. There are lots of creatures drawn here.
then these should be humans. But what is this? I don't know, but it doesn't seem like an intelligent species. It means, except for that drawing, all of them were the species with intelligence born to the earth from the divine tree, aren't they? There should be some key within that. Yup, you have to do it by order of intelligence. What is going on? If these drawings are some code, I wonder if there's some trick to the order we enter with. Maybe it's the order in which they are born to the world. The first species to be created of these is... Hmm. Rose said that this doesn't look like it has intelligence. Then that entrance should be the first one. Okay, try again. It reminds me, I read something about this in the National Library. The first species to be giving intelligence by the Divine Tree was Gigantos. Then, I think it was Menentos. They literally tell you the solution of the puzzle. Eventually, you'll get to a point if you don't, if you don't know the solution of the puzzle, where Dart will just say, it's impossible. Do we have to give up doing this? Of course we don't. I just wanted to point out that there is actually like a bunch of scenes and dialogue that you can get there. Uh, all of which kind of show us some unique story things. The fact that Gigantos were the first species ever born with intelligence. What is this? Hmm, looks like a tube. Let's use it. Ah, very similar animation, at least, to the Valley of Corrupted Gravity. What is this purple thing here? What? Just wait until you see what this guy, what this is, guys. Are you ready? This is the optional boss that we have to fight. This is the Scarred Super Virage. It's a dead end here. Let's go back. Wait. This is a Virage. And this scar, it must be the Virage that killed Belzac. Okay, so here is where uh, either it's it's like a writing issue or or maybe Rose doesn't actually know this, uh, but this is not the, this is not the, uh, the Virage that was killed by Belzac. No, no, no. In fact, this is the Virage that was killed by Kanzaz, uh, who self-destructed in that elf FMV that we saw in the big purple. He was Hatchel's uh, uh, predecessor, if you will. And this scar, it must be the Virage that killed Belzac. Nope. You say this is a Virage. What are you talking about? It's very odd to me that Rose doesn't know that, because she actually, in the FMV, called out to Kedzaz as he destroyed himself. It was a destructive weapon of ancient legend that battled throughout the Dragon Campaign with the Winglies. Although some still remain. But it looks totally different from the one we met before. It's one of their subspecies. And from its shape, it must have had a power far beyond the one we saw. But it's not a very pretty sight to see. Yeah, it looks pretty messed up. Okay. The Farage! Let's go, everybody! This is the battle! The optional battle against the Scarred Super Virage. 10,000 health. Of course, this thing is divided into three pieces. The head, the body, and the arm. I love how in its, in its battle here, the scar is totally different. It looks entirely different than what it did before. The monster from 10,000 years ago. Was it awoken by us? I mean, well, that's pretty much what keeps happening, right? Uh, so we're gonna go ahead, we're actually gonna throw a speed up onto Miranda, and I'm gonna try to make this fight as easy as possible. Here's the big thing about this fight that's actually super cool. No matter what, unless you're, unless you're wiped out, you win this fight. After 10 rounds, this will actually just, uh, it just destroy itself and do damage to you. Or you can choose to be super aggressive, transform using Miranda for the first time! Use a special... Wow, she looks awesome. And use her white silver dragon spell. 
None of her spells have changed from Shauna's. Like I said, Miranda gets everything that Shauna got except for Dart's Love. Uh, so she's going to go ahead and we have 250 MP, which means that we get a few uses of the White Silver Dragon, which is going to do a tremendous amount of damage to the super, uh, the Scarred Super Barrage here. Now you want to focus the head or the body to do the most damage, but what we're going to do is kind of cheese this fight just a little bit. Miru also has a brand new magic attack that I, I can't wait to show you guys now that she's also in Dragoon form. Now, of course, I did use Miranda's special here uh, so that her White Silver Dragon is actually doing more damage. As you saw, it did almost 2,000 damage. Right here, we have HP Recovery and Cure for all Rainbow Breath that removes status afflictions as well. So I thought I would point that out. But instead, we're going to use her magic attack, uh, Freezing Ring, to focus the head. Which I believe is our first time seeing Miru as a Dragoon as well. You by no means need to use Dragoons in this fight, but since we have a few fights coming up that Dragoons are just kind of useless in, uh, I figured we would we would at least show them off a little bit. All right, she has another. She has two more uses of the White Silver Dragon. This thing only has 10,000 health, so I believe that should be enough to finish this fight. That's the strength of Miranda, my friends. Another 1,800 damage, almost 1,900 damage done to all three parts, which means that the arm gets deleted. Or not. And for our dear friend Dart here, have we actually seen... I don't think we've seen his red-eyed dragon attack. Uh, potentially, I would say maybe we would use that, but we're not going to. Uh, just because I need his final burst. Final burst isn't going to do that much damage against uh, the super... The scarred super barrage here. But it will do about 700 or so. Another strategy that you could use to defeat the super, the scarred super virage, the super scarred virage, uh, is you can use Kongol, Albert, stuff like that at this moment uh, for this fight uh, because they have pretty high defense against uh, physical attacks, and this guy does attack with a lot of physical stuff. And then you can actually use Albert's Dragoon Rose Storm ability to negate uh, the the effects of when this thing does die and when when the turns are up or whatever. No matter what, you will get the experience for this fight. Whether you take it out yourself or whether it takes itself out, uh, you will end up getting the experience, which is a whopping 4,000, which is pretty nice. We're not going to see any massive level gains from this for everybody like we would with a normal boss fight. Uh, but still, it's an enemy that we get to fight. It's unique. And it's a pretty solid amount of experience. Miru no longer a Dragoon, which is perfect, actually, because if we need it, we can actually use the Sun Rhapsody that I picked up uh, to use it on Miranda so that she can get more uses of the White Silver Dragon. Although, I don't know if we're going to need it, folks. Now the, the arm is officially defeated. And that is the first attack that the, the Virage is using on us. Of course, we do have uh, uh, Miru using her... Uh, I'm actually gonna go ahead. I'm gonna I'm gonna use it. I'm gonna use the Sun Rhapsody on uh, on Miranda just in case. I think Miranda might be able to pretty much solo this thing. Lives remaining is nine. It's gonna go right for Miru here. This potentially could kill Miru, uh, and yes, in fact, it will kill Miru. But lucky for us, we have the White Silver Dra Dragoon, White Silver Dragon Dragoon, which means that we can just go ahead and resurrect her, no problem, with Moonlight. Of course, we also could have finished this fight with one more attack of the White Silver Dragon from uh, from Miranda, but I do want the XP on everybody. There's no point in Miru being down right now. She's one of the characters that 
Like, if Dart was dead, it wouldn't be a big deal. But because it's me, Ru, I, you know, I don't want her to be... I don't want her to be on the ground. She's my girl. Now, what I could have done with Miru, instead of using the Sun Rhapsody on, uh, on Miranda, is I could have used the Material Shield instead, uh, so that I would have just, she would just wouldn't have taken any damage. But the Scarred Super Barrage is in red health. Still nine lives remaining, which means nine turns remaining for it, which means that we killed this thing super quickly. It can do a tremendous amount of damage to you, so you do have to be careful of that. But... Miranda is so strong and and Dart is pretty defensive at this point that I just it just doesn't feel like we can really use uh, lose especially when you have drag, uh, level 5 dragoons in your party now this thing is going to be getting ready to attack I could use the white silver dragon to finish it off and you know what I will There is no doubt in my mind that this is the end of the Scarred Super Barrage and that we have avenged the fallen Dragoon Kanzat. Kanzaz. 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 I don't remember. K-A-N-Z-A-S. That's all I know. And of course, that will heal everybody up a little bit as well. And... Now that it's defeated, it's going to use its final move. Miranda's going to get out of her Dragoon form. Which actually isn't great because that means that she has lower defense now for this thing's killing move. It's DM, if you will. And there it is. Luckily, Miru last guarded, so she'll be just fine. Only 196 damage done to Miranda. Down goes the Scarred Super Barrage. That, my friends, is the power of this party. And we get a healing rain for defeating. No matter what, you will always get that healing rain. 200 G. And of course, where it matters, the 4,000 experience. Which should be enough to level up Miru to level 25. Which is why I did not want her to die. Nobody else got a level there. But everyone else uh, got, got very close to getting a level. Which is pretty good. Why do Virages wake up in reaction to us? I don't know. The Ancestor never mentioned about this thingy. So does this mean they were not just reacting to Shauna? Hmm. Shauna. I still don't know anything about the mystery surrounding Shauna. There is no choice for us but going forward. Come on, let's go. So, there actually is another choice instead of going forward. What you can do... This way actually does lead to the, uh, the, the, the final fight that I was, was going to tell you guys about, uh, th that, that, this, this way does. I'll just go ahead and show you what's over here. It's this room and we need to run all the way down. Uh, to go to where the final boss fight is, but we're not going to do that. I'm going to show you the long way as well, just because I think that it's uh, it's a little more important considering that some of the enemies that, or some of the items that we can find there are incredibly, incredibly good. One in particular is going to change the way that this game is played. Uh, and and yeah, we, we trust me, we need it. We want it. We want some more of it. And of course, this does allow us to go all the way back and use the save points and of course, uh, which I do recommend doing, no matter what, I recommend going back and using the save point. Uh, and also I'm gonna change my equipment on my peoples. And I put Congo back in the party, but more importantly, I also set up Miranda for the next boss fight because we are going to be using her. Uh, I equipped her with the magical ring and the legend cask. The magical ring is going to be super, super useful for the upcoming boss fight uh, because we're gonna cheese it a little bit. Kongo got a nice level up from that random encounter there. Level 25 now as well. Remember, the main reason why I'm using characters that I'm not using in boss fights, well, besides Miru, is just to work on their additions and stuff like that. 
And I think that is a, f a fine place to, to stop this episode. Uh, it, it would be a little bit too long if we went and did everything else that we have left for us here in Cadessa. So in the next episode, we will go and defeat the Grand Jewel, which many consider to be one of the hardest fights in this entire game. Uh, but I don't, and I think we're going to be able to beat it no problemo. We're also going to be able to get a really, really good item by taking the long way to the Grand Jewel, and I can't wait to show you guys what that is. It will change the game, I'm telling you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I hope you enjoyed my little cheesy way of defeating the Super Scarred Virage, or Scarred Super Virage, or whatever its name is. Thank you guys so much for watching. Huge shout out to those watching in the premieres every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I sincerely appreciate you guys. Thank you. Also, if you want to check me out live on twitch.tv slash online, I stream every Thursday, Friday, Saturday at 9 a.m. Eastern. Uh, and I would, I would love to see you guys over on Twitch. Thank you so much for watching. And remember, never give up, never surrender to the super scarred virage. The scarred super virage. I don't know. <laughs>